I'm going to perform a demonstration that can actually be used in three different units. The first time I show it to my students is when I'm trying to make distinctions between physical and chemical changes. And this is a difficult concept for some students. And what I do is I show them a piece of white paper and uh, ask them to make observations. And they'll notice that it's a rectangular shape. And they'll notice that it's thin and uh, that it seems to uh, let light through and um, has kind of a crinkling sound when you bend it. And I'll say, all right, I'm going to take this paper and I am going to tear it. And we'll make observations and notice that, okay, the edge is jagged on one side now in each of the two pieces. The shape is still rectangular, but it's two smaller rectangles. And I'll say to them, so what kind of a change? Did I make this into something new? Does it have new properties? It looks a little bit different. But they'll agree that it's essentially still the same substance, that it's still this white paper. And I'll say, all right, well, let's do something else to the white paper. Let's bring a match to it. Now, I will readily admit that my students think that this could be really boring. So some of them are not paying close attention. And I'll strike a match, and I'll bring it to the paper, and the paper will disappear. Now, as I said, my students were thinking, oh, it's just paper burning. So they'll say, we didn't pay attention. So I'll say, well, luckily we have another piece, so we can repeat the experiment. And we'll take that second half and do it again. Now, what's happened here? Obviously, the paper has disappeared, but did I do any magic? Did I destroy matter? No, obviously, I've changed that paper into something new. In fact, I've changed it into a number of colorless and actually odorless gases. Now, they're not going to pick up that those gases are odorless because they can smell the burning match. But they definitely know that the gases are odorless and are rather colorless. And so, therefore, we have taken something that was a white solid and we have changed it into something with new properties, gases that are colorless. So that is a chemical change. Now, is there any other place where we can use this? Well, that's at the beginning of the semester. So fast forward to the second semester, and uh, we'll be talking about things that affect the rate of a reaction. And so I'll bring this back again, and I'll say, all right, let's do a combustion reaction. And I'll bring out a piece of, in this case, it's uh, like Xerox paper. And I'll say, let's observe the combustion of our Xerox paper. Well, it burns at a, a moderate rate here. Of course, we'll go put this into the sink, into some water. And then I'll say, well, let's take another piece of paper that looks a little bit different and repeat the experiment. Now, some of them will maybe remember this paper from first semester. But even if they do, they like to watch the experiment again. And so what will we say there? Both combustions, each of them involves reaction with oxygen, but obviously at a different rate. And what determines that difference in rate? Well, it's the nature of the reactant, the nature of what you burn. Now, by the way, for the teacher information on this, and with my students I'd talk a little bit about this, is why does that paper, which I call flash paper, why does it burn cleanly? Why does it burn so rapidly? Well, if we need oxygen for something to react, that oxygen is furnished by the air. But it turns out that the paper has been treated. It has been nitrated. And therefore, within the paper, there's actually more oxygen than in regular paper. And so once it burns, it has that other oxygen from the paper's chemicals to help that combustion. And so we get that clean combustion. Now, I said that there was a third opportunity where you could use this flash paper. And I've actually used it as an assessment. Or you could talk about it, again, when you're talking about determining the rate of a reaction. 
And then we're talking about the appearance or disappearance of a, re a product versus a reactant. So I'll have the students make some measurements on the paper, and I'll say, well, what could we measure about the paper? Well, they could measure its mass, but they also could measure the length and the width of the paper and determine its area. And so they could make some quantitative measurements on the paper and then burn it, time that, and come up with a rate for that particular paper. Now, I also tell my students about this paper. I say, um, first of all, where do you get it? All right. Well, I said that it's flash paper. Magicians have used this, and so you can go to a magic store. But I was in New Orleans at one time and found a magic store at, the, at their mall, and I went in and I said, I'd like to buy some flash paper, which, by the way, is probably not easy to carry back in your luggage on an airplane or on your person on an airplane. But uh, this was pre-9-11, and I went in to buy the paper, and they said, oh, no, we can't carry that. And I said, why not? They said, well, actually, bookies used to write their bets down on flash paper, and then if somebody came in to raid where they were keeping the books, so to speak, they would quickly burn it up, and there would be no evidence of their having made any kind of bets because there wouldn't be any residue. It would be a clean combustion. So my students find that a little bit amusing. So flash paper, a real attention getter. Use it for physical versus chemical change. Talk about nature of reactants in a combustion reaction and rates. And then I actually calculate a rate by making some measurements.